Hello everyone, this is John Buck back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to introduce the Fourier transform for continuous time, uh, show you the where it fits in the overall story of the class, and show you the basic equations for it. Then I'll do a couple of videos showing examples of uh, applying the Fourier transform analysis equation to calculate the Fourier transform of a common time signal, and then also one with the inverse transform equation, showing how we can use the synthesis equation to go from a Fourier transform and, and get back to a time domain signal. Okay, so let's switch over to the whiteboard and, see, and uh, I'll start there. So the uh, Fourier transform fits in the larger story of our picture in that it's, it's the next branch in our uh, frequency domain exploration. Remember, we started the semester by talking about things in the time domain, right? So the, the sort of time version here is we think of any time signal as being a superposition of all these impulses. So we're sort of thinking about, in this view of the world, we're thinking about each instant in time uh, or, or thinking about a signal one instant at a time. And then that led us to an output that was the convolution. By thinking of this, we said for LTI systems, we can then say, well, the response to each of these deltas is the delayed impulse response, and we get an output that's the convolution sum. Or rather, not convolution sum, but convolution integral. And so uh, that's the, uh, the sort of time view of the world. Again, where the idea on this side is we're thinking about one the signal one instant at a time. And after we finished that approach, we went to the other side, or the other perspective, which is to think about things one frequency at a time. And our first branch, the first exploration, our first branch of, of sort of three main branches we'll take this semester was the Fourier series. All right, and the Fourier series said that we can think about things that are periodic x of t, as a superposition of a discrete set of harmonic frequencies, right? We could write it as a weighted sum of complex exponentials that are all e to the j k omega naught with some weights in front and adding them up. And this view, right, we said is, this is the Fourier series view of the world. Right? And we saw, then we could go through filtering this. We say, well, that the eigenfunction property for LTI systems says if I put this through an LTI system, this uh, each exponential comes out as the same exponential scaled by the frequency response of the system evaluated at that frequency, k omega naught. And that led us to the Fourier uh, system, or Fourier series view of filtering. Right? And in that view of filtering, we say our output is still going to be a periodic signal and still be made out of a weighted sum of complex exponentials. But now those exponentials, we often call them uh, B sub K, right? Our, the B sub Ks are the original input signals, A sub Ks, each of them scaled by this frequency response of the system at the kth harmonic. So that's our first approach into the frequency side of the world. I've sort of added this green line in the middle here to, to separate the two different ways we think about signals in this world, right? This is sort of the, the in this class, right? this is the time domain, and this is the frequency domain side. Right, so so for this frequency domain side, we're, we've changed our perspective, and we're now thinking about the signal, rather than thinking about it in time, we're thinking about it one frequency, the k omega naught harmonics at a time. So that's sort of the story so far we've had in the class. Today is the beginning of the next step. We say, well, there are a lot of important signals in the world that aren't periodic. Can we bring some of the same approach to them? And luckily, the answer is yes, that there's another sort of branch here on the right of this tree that says, in addition to uh, periodic signals, we can look at finite energy signals. Right, so this Fourier transform branch is, is uh, in fact, for signals that are... Uh, uh, not periodic, but our finite energy, they, all the finite energy fit, signals fit here. We'll see, in fact, we can even go a little bigger than this. All the periodic signals will turn out to be special cases of Fourier transforms. And many of our other favorites, like sines and cosines, we can we can sort of squeeze them under the Fourier transform umbrella as well. And so the, the key here, though, is is remember that, that these harmonics for omega naught were set by the period. Right, that the frequencies we cared about for periodic things were every 2 pi over t. One way to think about something that's not periodic is that t has gone to infinity, which means the omega naughts are infinitely close together. And when you do that, our signal is no longer 
we, we're think our recipe for a signal is no longer in the time domain, but instead it's a frequency domain thing. Or, or rather, it's not a time. Just forget what I just said. It's no longer a, a, a sum of harmonics. Instead, it's, it's still in the frequency domain, but it is an integral of an infinite set of frequencies that are inf continuously close together rather than the discrete harmonics. And so we write that as a Fourier synthesis integral. Right, so if I look at this, this is saying my top, my signal now, the, the 1 over 2 pi is just some bookkeeping accounting. Don't that, the, the real action is here inside the integral. Remember, an integral is like an infinite sum of things that are infinitely close together. So from that point of view, what I've got going on here is still a bunch of complex exponentials with different frequencies, each of them getting weighted by a different x of j omega, just like each of these got weighted by the a sub k. So the x of j omega now is like an a sub k, but instead of being defined at k equals 1, 2, 3, 4, I've got to define it for all the omegas, from minus infinity to plus infinity. But it's still the same thing as like how much of this exponential do I need in my recipe to make this signal. So it's gone from a sum to an integral. The, the, uh, so this is the synthesis equation. We also still have an analysis equation, which is, is uh, to f if I give you x of t, how do you find x of j omega? How do you get to the recipe? And like we had before, this is still an integral. And so this explains, given the time signal x of t, how do I solve to figure out how much of each frequency is in that signal and what the mag that is what the magnitude and phase are. This x of j omega is a complex uh, function of omega. Uh, and this is the Fourier analysis equation. And again, structurally, it's actually kind of similar to the formula we had for finding the a sub k's, where we would integrate over one period. Here, we're, the period, like we said, has gone to infinity, so we're integrating over all time for this signal. So that's sort of the roadmap and the main equations we'll be using, these Fourier transform equations, these pair right here. So it's probably worth reminding ourselves of one of the, the uh, memes we saw last semester in ECE 320, just as x of n and x of e to the j omega are sort of two, set, two versions of the same thing. The same is true now. We, we could update this meme to have x of t and x of j omega, it's the same idea that's sort of captured here in the meme of two views of the same thing. And, and we're going to keep doing all this. Or we're going to follow a lot of the same uh, strategies we did last term in 320 with this here. Okay, well, I'm going to stop this video here. In the next video, I'm going to go on and show some examples of actually working with these equations for common signals we see a lot in engineering. Okay, so that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.